going on, dudes and dudettes? So, yes, a couple of USC basketball players have decided to go to the NBA. Both Drew Peterson and Chavez Goodwin have declared. So, hopefully, something good happens. But Peterson did say he is not hiring an agent at the moment. So, because he has one more year of eligibility left, he can come back after the whole process to see where he might get drafted. Hearing from NBA teams, he doesn't like it come back for one more year to finish off his college career which would be pretty cool for USC needs some a little bit of veteran help with Isaiah Mobley already gone and Goodwin as well who officially graduated I believe he can't come back so we'll see how that goes but yes good luck and congrats to both of those guys whatever happens then also with USC basketball found out that both Trey White and Isaiah Sellers officially signed with this recruiting class coming in this fall so as of right now they're like one of the better teams even those guys are both top 10 California players <clears throat> so they're pretty talented but I believe those guys officially coming along have put USC's class number six overall in the country in basketball which is pretty awesome for this <clears throat> excuse me following season coming up but also the number one team in the Pac-12 as of right now which is saying a lot with the and they're in the same conference as UCLA. So overall, good signs for USC basketball. Then when it comes to Duke, yes, Emil Jefferson, one of the grad assistants or assistants to the coach or something like that. It's a weird title he had, but he was still basically an assistant coach and a recruiter and all that. But now he is officially named pretty much taking Nolan Smith's spot. So I'm pretty sure he'll be heavy in the recruiting process and a, well as one of the top assistant coaches as well for Duke now so that's pretty cool to see at least they're hiring within and ex-players as well which is always good then Derek Whitehead the more recent guy to sign with Duke that's coming in this fall was considered one of the top three players overall coming out of high school this season he did rec was recently named the Max Preps player of the year which is pretty pretty big honor a lot of guys especially the past couple years whether it's going to USC football or even Duke basketball have been named that so overall it's a successful senior season for him hopefully it will continue in the next level at Duke that's all we can hope for then yes good luck to all those Duke guys in that photo going into the playoffs I know I think Brandon Ingram of the Pelicans is still alive right now obviously you got Jason Tatum with the Celtics Gary Trent Jr. Toronto guys like that so good luck to all those guys and obviously the USC guys as well it's going a little bit thin for USC but yes a lot more Duke guys in the NBA as of this second then when it comes to Malik Monk during his exit interview he did say he would like to come back with the Lakers just because of how much he's grown whether it's mentally physically on the court off of court just being around the veteran presence of guys like LeBron and AD all this stuff according to him so it's pretty good they're able to get him on a cheap deal this last offseason which surprised everybody but now everybody kind of expects them to have to pay excuse me pay up but luckily in that exchange he did say money was not a factor I think they all say that but as long as it's a good enough contract I think he'll stay which is gonna be a pretty good get for the Lakers going into their future then Kendrick Nunn the one player that the Lakers signed last offseason that did not play one game at all for the Lakers says he's it's a no-brainer that he's gonna <clears throat> exercise his player option coming up for this next offseason uh, it was just based on him if he was gonna accept it or not kind of like how Westbrook has that opportunity to do that as well but it's a no-brainer for him because he basically got paid to ride the bench. But yeah, it just sucks that <clears throat> supposedly a talented player like him isn't playing for your team and he's just there, which sucks. Yeah, he dealt with an injury. Hopefully it's all 100% behind him going into summer workouts, but you just never know with these guys. Then recent articles came out saying that both Quinn Snyder and Juwan Howard are both not interested in the Lakers job and I think it's more to do with their front office compared to being co being the head coach to LeBron. LeBron is always known as a coach killer but I think as of late 
this last you know interaction with Frank Vogel was more of a detriment with the front office and the owner compared to LeBron this time so we'll see uh, at least Quinn Snyder in my opinion was a better candidate of the two but we'll see who ends up getting the job I guess then yes Luol Deng an ex-Duke player that signed a pretty big contract with the Lakers pretty early I think it was like 2015 2016 around there something like that and he hardly ever really played for the Lakers after like two or three seasons they let him go and then officially like waived or stretched out his contract so I think he stopped playing for them like in 2018 maybe 2019 but he was still getting paid like around four or five million dollars a year which counted against the Lakers cap space so they weren't able to basically sign an extra player or two because that money was going to a player that is retired now but you know I guess congrats to him he had Duke <laughs> that Duke education helped him out but yes officially once this summer starts it will be gone and off the books and they'll be able to do at least some more magic with some money that they have but yeah, it's just crazy how long contracts can last. I know they've been thinking about maybe doing that with Westbrook's contract, but his contract is so much larger. You'd have to give up so much more annually. So I don't think that's a really smart idea for an office. Please do not stretch that contract. It would be pretty horrible. Then ex-USC player and one of my more favorite high school quarterbacks coming out, JT Daniels, who was at USC for a bit, but then got hurt, lost his job to Slovis, transferred to Georgia, didn't really get to play. I think he like basically started seven games with 7-0, and but kind of lost his job to the older guy, Stetson Bennett, especially when they won the title this year, but he is officially going to West Virginia. It's kind of interesting because he's reuniting with the ex-USC offensive coordinator Graham Harrell up there, so it kind of wasn't a surprise. I'm just glad he's not in the Pac-12, we'd have to face him again. But surprisingly, I think ESPN's first Thursday night game in the the fall this year, like early September, I believe it's Pittsburgh versus West Virginia, which, you know, forces him to play against the ex guy who he lost a job to, Slovis, because Keaton Slovis transferred there from USC to Pittsburgh. So that's going to be pretty interesting to see the ex USC quarterbacks go at it. I'm obviously taking Daniels. He was my more favorite of the two, but yeah, it's just crazy how everything all ends up going back together, I guess. Pretty interesting. Then Notre Dame recently scheduled a Division II opponent in their football schedule, which pretty much leaves only USC as the only college to not play a Division II team or an FCS program. At, on their football schedule, which is pretty interesting just because a lot of times you schedule these guys to pretty much pay them like a million or two million bucks to beat up on them. I know USC doesn't want to do that just because it's a free win and kind of no point. They did, I think the other year or two had scheduled UC Davis or some other type of school, but I believe UC Davis is now a division one school. So I don't know if that's really going to count anymore. So I don't know if USC will fold and try to get an easy game like that because I don't think Lincoln Riley ever did that at Oklahoma, so I don't think they will. So as of right now, I guess they could hold that title if not, you know, crumbling and trying to get that easy victory out of the second. Then the article came out saying that the Chargers' top two positions in the draft that they should be looking at, especially in the first round, are a really good offensive tackle, which kind of going to be available there or not, you never know, at 17, or a big play wide receiver, so a very fast guy, so I don't know, sometimes those guys are available, the more complete receivers are available in the first round, but not the fast guys, you can get those guys later in the draft, so maybe they shouldn't prioritize that much on a guy like that, go for some other position, in my opinion, but should be interesting. And then yes, they also held a private workout with San Diego State's punter Matt Ariza. I'm kind of surprised that they even did that just because they recently signed the punter that they've had this last season to like a two or three year deal. 
So I kind of did a lot of these mock drafts and had to redo them because I had them picking Matt Ariza in those picks like around in round five or four sometimes maybe six whenever he was available but then once I saw that he signs that they signed a new punter or a, a punter that they've had I said well these these draft these mock drafts make no sense so I redid them all and of course they held a private workout with the guys and like I don't know I don't I think Ariza is too good to just put on your practice squad or something like that on the bench like why would a team keep two punters that's insane and why would you sign a guy to a big big at least lengthwise big deal of another guy at the same position right before this so i don't know it's pretty pretty crazy but we'll see and then just the other day it was the anniversary of kobe's very last basketball game as a laker at staples center where he scored over 60 points which is pretty awesome Pretty crazy to see. I remember I caught that game late and I just remembered it was a close game and I looked and I said he had like 40 something at the time. I'm like, wow, I can't believe I missed this. But yes, I watched the whole rest of that game. It was just awesome to see. It was great. Never thought, it, I don't think we'll ever see anything like that in someone's final game again. He took like, I think it was like 30 plus shots or something like that. They just kept force feeding him and he looked exhausted after, but Definitely glad he was able to give us one great final performance like that. Then to finish off with some miscellaneous news, yes, a guy that I've known quite a bit just because obviously everybody's seen Aladdin or I've mostly known him for his 100 plus, you know, appearances on the Howard Stern show. But yes, sadly, Gilbert Gottfried, the comedian, passed away the other day. I guess it was due to some type of muscle dystrophy where basically some part of his body was going and couldn't really do anything about it which sucked but yeah overall he's been he's been a very funny guy kind of controversial guy i know he lost his affleck as a duck job because he made a joke about this a tsunami happening in japan or i think it was japan something like that and of course the majority owner in stock of affleck were, were some were ja some japanese company so yeah he ended up losing it because of that and yeah, there's just like a nice documentary about him. Probably a little over an hour long. I forget where I saw it. I think it's probably on any streaming thing. You just watch it for free. But yeah, that's a pretty good insight to look at him because he's always like a jokey, kind of funny guy. I remember him on Hollywood Squares when I was younger and stuff like that. But even during that um, documentary, you can see how timid and very calm down and normal he was, especially the fact that he had children as well when... He always laughed at the idea of that ever happening to him. So pretty good documentary. You should check it out. So yes, thanks for watching people. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye down.